There's too much confusion. Updates, revisions that you have under consideration for today. It's item 1.5.4.1.1. Can you, can you help me out with um, that? Well, that section may have been included as part of a larger context. That section is not being changed or altered. These are updates related to the countywide planning policies that were adopted and ratified by the jurisdictions um, a couple months back, back in 2017. So this really is just corresponding updates. So while that section may have been provided as part of a larger context, I don't believe that there's any substantive changes to that section at all. It just has to do with the corresponding It, it was impossible to tell that from the packet because there were no strikeouts or changes. So if that is not an agenda item, then I would like to speak at this point in time and there may be several okay. other My apologies. I don't think that, um, yeah, I thought the strikeouts did show up in the documents. They did not. No. You also had a major error in that document. Okay. Humongous. So, so it, I will call you one by one to speak to the APZ. Uh, and, and you'll get a chance to be heard through that and let's not have an open discussion. So, uh, are you Lynn? Lynn Peterson? No, I'm Lynn Peterson. Okay, uh, come on up forward. Okay, and I am here for the APZ discussion. Yeah, I see, see that right I here. Would, if, you could state like your, if you could state your name and your address, please. Lynn Peterson, 147 Rubley Road, Green Bank, Washington. Could I ask the members a question first? You've been to KHU represent District 1, 2, and 3. Are you each appointed by the commissioner for those districts? Yes. Yes, ma'am, we are. Okay, my second question is, I have a, an understanding here that uh, you have a, oh heck, I can't find it now, uh, an item in your comprehensive planning things that say uh, the bases are strategically located national Asset and constitute a considering capital investment, yada yada. Closure of these facilities would result in extreme population loss for the county. As such, the county's land use decisions support the retention and future use of these facilities. I'd like to know who's responsible for that language. Did some individual, did someone draft this? Who? The comp plan, there's, could you repeat that? Like, there's no new language proposed for the comp plan, and I think the strike throughs, did, they just show the okay. lines, but not Back the in 1917, somebody created that language? Could you repeat the language? I, then I can okay, repeat. I will repeat the language. Uh, the closure of these number? facilities, <coughs> we're talking. have a page number that we could follow? Section 1.5.4.11 on military airports. The closure of these facilities would result in extreme population and economic loss for the county. As such, the county's land use decisions support the retention and future use of these facilities. And I want to know who we have to thank for that language. I'm afraid we have to do a little research into that because that's already the existing comp plan. It may have been as part right. of the original comp plan adoption. We don't know if it would have changed in 2005, but okay. we could <coughs> be part of the original. I we're we're going to have to have that. staff get back to you on that because what we have in front of us that we're working on <coughs> amendments and revisions to the comp plan. And if this language existed, there is quite a potential that it existed before any of the board current planning commission members All right. were appointed. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate that answer. Meanwhile, uh, I would like to state as far as the APZ goes, I wrote comments to the EIS, and I wrote them partly as a member of the Whidbey Island Nordic Lodge. This is a member-funded and created lodge. It does rental income. It rents to a church. It rents to yoga classes. It rents to high school reunion, to wedding receptions, to the Saratoga Symphony, to various things. And we also have meetings ourselves there. We last our meeting last Saturday uh, <coughs> had 40 members there. We have book club there. We have musical performances there. Absolutely every one of these things is incompatible with being an APC Zone 1. And so what I'm here for is to protect my interests and my way of life. And this is incompatible with facilitating in every way possible the use of our land by the Navy. At least in so far as they're going to at least you're out APCs of time. So, so at, at this time, I have to say that your time is up. If Fine, you can I'm email done. that into an email, I'm sure that staff will be sure to get it to us. Okay. And we will respond. Mr. Chairman, I'm 
Chairman, I just looked through my copy that was posted online. It does have a line that indicates there was a strike through, but it didn't actually show the strike through. So my apologies. But again, the discussion today really only relates. Well, there's some. I do actually see some strike throughs. So again, the discussion today relates only to um, uh, changes that correspond with the countywide planning policy updates that have to do with. Um, the J, um, joint planning area overlay designation. So and we changed some language and are updating it in our compliance. It's almost just an administrative um, requirement uh, to make sure that our comp plan is uh, consistent with our countywide planning policies, but no language will be um, addressing um, accident potential zones. It just was a the larger chapter context. <laughs> some of the strike throughs are there, but some aren't. And the memo was kind of clear, but I, I think some of the strike throughs got dropped. I have uh, three other cards here that, that mention specifically the comp plan. One is Lori Taylor. Again, if you could state your name for the record and your address, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman Hammond. I'm Lori Taylor. I'm here on 6th Street in Coopville. Um, I'm going to then truncate and edit my comments a little bit since we're not talking about uh, specific changes to the comp plan. Um, I sat on the Planning Commission here in Coopville, and I also represent Coopville Community Allies, which is an advocacy group here in Coopville um, that formed to give feedback to the draft EIS regarding the Growler expansion. Um, so I know sitting on the Planning Commission, you probably this whole audience of people isn't here to do to say they're really stoked about everything in the document. So I'm just going to try to give some useful um, information. Right now, you may not know it, but there's a, a House Bill 2341 and a Senate Bill 6456. They're in the legislature brought forward by a group called the Washington Military Alliance, which is a sadly a state taxpayer funded uh, political action committee to advance military expansion in Washington state. And in those bills, they have things that would directly affect your jobs. What they do is they add a solicitation, a regular solicitation to the base commander about any impacts uh, in the community that might be impacting the base's current or future use or operations. And they allow that base commander to veto any local or city or county planning measures uh, if, if that base commander um, assesses or says without, without proof that the impacts of the community affect its current or future operations not just adjacent as, as currently is in the RCW 3670 530 but in the vicinity, with vicinity not defined and with aviation operations that could theoretically mean anywhere in the state. Uh, we believe this is unconstitutional and uh, obviates the public process in this case. So we'd really like you to take a look at it and comment on it. It's right now going to be reviewed by the Local Governments Committee on Thursday. It is still in the Environment Committee in the House, and the Local Governments Committee is in the Senate, but we believe it deserves your analysis and review and commentary because it does really undercut your entire process. Lastly, I just want to, how am I on time? You're okay so far. Okay. Um, Thank you for um, asking. Okay. Um, I tend to get windy, so I'm trying not to, and I get a little nervous. On the topic of APZs, um, you know, if the Growler expansion proposal is what's decided upon, and we have a fourfold increase in operations at the OLF, we'll have to enact APZs for safety at the OLF uh, because of the number of operations per track. That's going to have profound economic impacts, not just on the value of the land, what people can do with their land, how much uh, it'll affect the amount of property value in the county. Um, we'll have a uh, distinct drop. There's $1.3 billion of property in the noise contours. Um, so county services would have to go down, or for them not to go down, taxes would have to go up. In addition, there are so many um, prohibitions on industry that it actually makes our economy less diverse, even in the fields of agriculture and tourism. So we hope to have a continuing conversation with you about this in the future, and I appreciate you making time for our comments today. Thank you. Thank you. And we all recognize that, that this is a really important discussion topic, so uh, I appreciate the fact that you're limiting your comments, but also recognize that, that we're, we're here as your advocates, and, and we've been appointed by the commissioners uh, to perform that function. So we do take your comments seriously, and if I do have to cut anybody off, uh, please know that we do get your emails, and we do read them, and we will do everything that we can to, uh, to do what, what we can for the community. Uh, Joe Kunzler. You may start the clock. 
Hi, I'm Joe Kunzler. Um, my email address is squarewardnoise at gmail.com. I take care of my parents in Cedar Willie, but I stand 525 feet away or less from outlying field group field naval flight operations. So I certainly get the sweetness of growlers more than most people. Um, I, I learned today that CORE was going to pull a mass launch, so I figured I'd come down here. I'm happy Coopville Community Allies is also here. I want to start at the outset as far as APCs go, is I'm a huge advocate of a moderated form of them that will, on one hand, protect the Navy's ability to train at Lionfield Coopville because it's absolutely vital and irreplaceable for the uh, Navy to be able to train its carrier pilots to do those proper carrier landings. If the Navy closed OLF Coopville, we would lose some of the best training for student pilots that we have available to us. The Navy would lose a vital resource to our, uh, our training and ultimately our, uh, our ability to perform around the carrier. OLF Coopville is essential to us, to us building that foundation that we need to go fly around the boat safely and not have to spend weeks and weeks away from family. Um, and I suspect most of this audience isn't going to like it when I say this, but uh, uh, last year the uh, Corps whined to the State Board of Health about all these health impacts from the Jets. Guess what the State Board of Health decided to do after two meetings? They said, the Vice Chair said, you need to ask for growth management. growth management, and what do we do with growth management, and engaging uh, the representative and senators uh, who represent Highland County uh, to work with the Department of Defense to move this up in their priority. And it then falls to other agencies within Highland County, Highland County commissioners, city planners, uh, to deal with uh, how, what are we going to do about this uh, existing, pre-existing field and where we go. We certainly know that King County has dealt with these issues. They bought a whole bunch of houses on their approaches to uh, SeaTac, and they moved folks out, and it was painful and difficult, but it can be done. A net year, and I, e and I uh, emailed this uh, to your Planning Commission email address, the whole transcript I had made, but um, also, uh, regarding uh, growth management, another board health member pretty much said that local government, like the County Board of Commissioners, the County Planning Commission, should not allow building around the Ola Coopville because they blame them for some of the health issues. Uh, this is uh, Steve Kutz. I want to point out that. Um, the Island County Board, Board of Commissioners and Island County Board of Health um, have, have it within their power to address some of these issues if they cho so choose to uh, do that. And uh, their decisions to allow building to occur around aircraft have contributed to this. And, and so I'm not going to let them off the hook for that. Thank and you. if they continue to allow building to occur in these areas around this, uh, they're the ones that are going to have to figure it out. I'm just a messenger from the State Board of Health. Um, and uh, how much time do I have? You're OK so far. Well, I'll let you know. OK. Um, there's also the matter of RCW 36.70A.5.33, which says, quote, a comprehensive plan, amendment to a plan, a development regulation, or amendment to a development regulation should not allow development in the vicinity of a military installation that is incompatible with the installation's ability to carry out its mission requirements, end quote. The new legislation that's before the State Senate and the State House is to make sure the base commander is notified, the base commander is going to notify his or her base land use liaison, and then they're going to get back to your staff. Um, 
Speaking of which, this is a rather sensitive topic, and I see the light is turned yellow, so I will be as quick as I can. There is a gigantic error in 1.5.4.1.1 in this document that needs to be fixed immediately. Apparently, in 2011, an air installations compatible use zones program was initiated. I was told by one of the ladies here when I spoke to her and asked her, hey, uh, you know, when, when was this study? And she was like, Joe, it didn't happen. Well, uh, the, the, the typo is still in here, so I don't know what the path forward is. I see the white thread, but you really need to have a study session just on 1.5.4.1.1 at a time when Navy supporters and Corps can be here equally, which would be in the evening. Thank you for taking my comments. Thank you. Okay. And, and we, we appreciate both sides of, of the discussion so that you know that uh, um, it's good to have dialogue. This is what these public hearings are for. And we recognize that there is going to be uh, debate and that there are uh, passionate uh, people out there on both sides of, of these issues. And so we just want to make sure that, uh, that, we, that you all understand that we know that. Yes, sir? I, I'll no Do you have a card? Yes. Yeah, Michael Munson. Oh. Okay, come on up. Okay. One of the biggest problems as I see it is the Could I get you to state your name? Michael Sorry, Munson and your address? 105 Jacobs Road in lovely Coopville. Uh, historically, uh, and, and, and this has nothing to do with you guys, but it has to do with the Planning Commission, you change membership. And at one point in time, the Planning Commission, as you all know, was very pro-development. And then the Navy comes in, and they're around the OLF. They have a problem. The problem is you already have all this development around the OLF. And that's not good. It w all of the development, Admiral's Code, for example, would not have been allowed under the under if you, if you had uh, an APC and a proper AQs in place. What I'm saying is now it's too damn late. There are houses there, there are a lot of people there, and the Navy has something called magic carpet. I don't know if you've all heard about it. If you haven't heard about it, please listen up and look into it. It's a program where the last few seconds of the landing is done by computer. And it, it will extremely reduce the number of needed um, FLCPs. And if you were to take a look at this and get back to the Navy saying, thank you very much, we're excited that you have a program called Magic Carpet, and your use of the OLF is incompatible with our citizens' needs, and they can uh, maintain the practicing, the very, very necessary practicing of field carrier landing practices up at Alt Field. There's no need anymore to use the OILF. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Brian Reed. <clears throat> I'm going to yield my comments and put this in an email. This is, uh, what you gave out here, I guess, was fairly confusing to me. I thought we were going to be discussing things like uh, the land use designations and also the um, land use um, designation. Anyway. That's fine. So, so I, I appreciate you so yielding. I'm, I'm, you know, this is, this, I mean, I don't know who put out these, this uh, packet, but it was over there on the, on the table. and. Um, that information that I wasn't aware of, so I'm going to just have to send an email instead. We, we appreciate your comments and we look forward to your, your email, sir. Marian, Marianne Atwood? Good afternoon. I'm Marianne Atwood from 640 Patmore Road. <clears throat> and um, uh, Lori did cover a lot of the things I, I wish to cover, so I'm going to also email you um, information that I think will be helpful for you going forward. 
and uh, wanted to remark again about these two bills that have been proposed in this year's uh, legislature in Olympia, the House Bill 2341 and the Senate Bill 6456 that are going to take a lot of your land use decisions away from you and give them to the military commanders. Um, it will put things like rights crossing in the crosshairs of this kind of, de this kind of decision making. Um, our local decision making will be uh, severely impacted by these two bills. And so we've been working a lot uh, with lots of other groups throughout the state actually about these two pieces of legislation. And I just wanted to spend a moment talking about growth and um, uh, these two particular bills bring out uh, that information and that they t are talking about numbers of jobs. And here in Island County we've done a lot of talking about numbers of jobs and we haven't spent, I think, enough time in talking about um, the cost-benefit analysis. What is the cost of that military installation on local communities? And uh, last year, a group of citizens uh, gathered together and hired their own local economist, Michael Schumann, who is a, a, a specialist economist who does a lot of work with uh, sustainable economies throughout the country and the world, actually. And so I brought copies of that uh, report that was done for Whidbey Island. And it does show um, that there are substantial infrastructure costs that may be, a, may be invisible to you, but are very apparent. And Island County could be um, much richer if this uh, naval installation was a corporation instead of a military installation we could be getting much more tax money and that, that uh, we would be $5 million richer, according to this report. So it's, it's well worth the reading. It's not very long. And there's a PowerPoint, uh, not a PowerPoint, there's a video on the link uh, when you get the package. I'm going to leave one for each of you over with uh, your person. And uh, there's a video that uh, Michael Schumann is giving uh, a presentation. And so that might be an easier way for you to get the information. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments.